What's up, everyone? Hope you're all having a great day. It is Wednesday morning, and uh, this is my third time filming this video. Why is this my third time filming this video, you might ask? Because I forgot to zoom in both of the last two times. So, whatever that's uh, telling you about my day today, I'm pretty tired, but very excited to get this one going. So, in this video, we're going to be looking at the text form field. Now, what is that, right? It's a wrapper that kind of gives you some extra functionality on top of the text field widget. And there are two approaches that you can go with for this. You can go with the controller approach or you can go with the simple on changed approach. And that's what we're going to be looking at today is the on changed approach, which in my opinion is the simpler of the two, but generally will result in the same thing with the exception that the controller is of course more powerful because it is more complex. But for our purposes, and I would say eight or nine out of 10 times that you need a form, this is probably going to be fine. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is note that you need to have a stateful widget because we're going to be using state here and manipulating state. And it's very important that we have the stateful widget. The next thing is create a column somewhere because we're going to have two widgets to demonstrate what is going on here. The first widget is going to be a text widget. It's just a simple text widget and we're going to be displaying the value as uh, of our text form field as it updates so that we can you know demonstrate that it works right and then the next widget will be of course our text form field widget because well without that there's no point in this video first thing we're going to do is at the top of your state class or somewhere in the state class create a new variable called name and this can be null for right now it doesn't really matter we'll come back to that the next thing we're going to do is create this text field or not text field, this text widget. And inside of there, we will use string interpolation and that will be the name value. So the text in there will be whatever we pass in as the name. The next thing we're going to do is create this text form field, right? And inside of there, we're going to have an on changed method. It's really a callback method, a callback function, right? So every time the user does something in this field, essentially what's going to happen is this will be run. So our widget now looks like this. Unfortunately, I still can't zoom that in, but our widget now looks like this. I can type in here, right? And nothing happens because we haven't actually told anything to happen yet. But regardless, it does work so far the way we wanted to. Now inside of here, inside of this callback function, there's something important to note here is that this is a voided function, which means that it doesn't return anything. The only thing you can do here is make your calculation or perform your action or something like that. And then that's it. There is no returning, no nothing, right? So what I'm going to do to demonstrate it, what kind of is working here is I'm going to print the text. So now let's have a look. If we type this, we'll see that this down here is in fact the text and it lines up because we have three D's here and we have three D's down here. And this is something else that's important to note. If you come from React or Angular or something like that, and you've ever worked with some of the rich text editors that they use, for example, Quill.js, which is a very good rich text editor, you will know that those work, or sometimes that one definitely works, and the other ones can sometimes work off of deltas, which means the difference between the previous state and the new state. This is not the case. We get the entire text value here, which is cool because that means we don't have to do anything. It's that's just that's what we need. That's what we get, right? So let's now make this do something, right? Let's make it do something a little bit more interesting. Let's now set this to be name equal to text. And then we'll print name. Okay. Just like that. Now what happens we go here, we leave this page, we come back, we type something in. We see that name, the value of name down here is being changed, but it's not being changed here in this text thing. However, I think this might work. No, it doesn't work. It's not being changed here. Why is that? We're changing the value here. The reason is because we have to call set state. Now set state triggers, it tells flutter to trigger a new build method. It basically says, Hey, something about me has changed. You have to re render the build method so that you can display those changes on the UI. If you don't care about changing the, 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 the ugh, can't talk. If you don't care about changing the user interface, 
then you don't have to call set state because as you can see, the value of name is in fact getting set to whatever it is that we type in. However, if you do want to change the user interface, right, it depends on the kind of app that you have, then you will in fact need to call set state so that the, the UI Flutter knows, hey, rerun the build method so that you can show the actual data that is inside of me, okay? And this is very important. And this is in fact how we can see that, that this kind of works. The next thing I want to do is I want to set an initial value. And this is important because you might have the situation where, you know, in my app, for example, I'll show you right now, I have a profile. And inside of that profile, you can have your, your data, you have your profile data. But it'd be really bad to use your experience if every time you wanted to edit your profile, all of these things were blank. I don't want that. I want to show the current value of what they are in the database so that they know what to what to do, right? What to what to update, how, what the value is. And so that's that's how we're going to do this is by setting the initial value. So let's go here and set initial value will be equal to name. But right now name is null. So we have to change that, right? So let's come down here and we'll change this to be equal to hey. Let's go to a different page here. And you can see that this was changed. Our initial value of name is now what's displayed inside of our text widget right here. And now inside of our form field, we now have the initial value of hey, because we set that to be so here. And we can keep typing and it'll still work just the same, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we have the exact same result that we had before. Now we can set an initial value, which you could get from, I don't know, maybe it's stored somewhere in your app, or maybe you're pulling from a database or wherever it is, you can set your initial value so that your user has a better user experience. I do apologize if I seem kind of tired, because for some reason, I'm just really tired today. Uh, but regardless, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please thumbs up this video, give me a like down below, it really helps out the channel. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more and hit that bell symbol so you get notified. Also, leave me some comments. Let me know how I did. Uh, what videos do you guys want to see next? Something preferably about Flutter since that's what I'm kind of doing a lot of lately. But videos on JavaScript too are cool or Node or whatever you guys want. I work a lot of stuff, do a lot of stuff with that. So uh, let me know in the comments down below. All right. Have a good one. Peace.